Now, one more thing we're going to do in this particular video is apply a planar cutback. On page 18, exercise 8, talks about planar cuts, cutbacks, and also talks about physical member lines and model annotation. So there's some good information there in the practice workbook. But to do this to the columns, because of the way this is going to be, we're going to have a slab. Our beams and slab are going to go over the top of the columns, but we want that physical member line to be at the top of the floor. So over in Structural Design in row D, I'm going to choose this Apply Planar Cutback tool. Notice you have a couple of different options here in your tool settings, minimum clearance, absolute clearance. I'm going to use absolute clearance and set it to 8 inches. And then simply select each column. So take me a minute. So go ahead and do that. So I've gone through and applied that planar cutback. I'm going to change my display mode back to... Uh, I'm going to change my display mode back to this illustration without lighting. If I get zoomed into one of these, you'll see how that physical member line is still going up to the 20 foot 6, but I've applied that planar cutback. So that will help when I go to start making sections, uh, for example, through my model. Let's talk about that physical member line for a second. Every time you place a structural component like columns and beams, that red line that we see in there is the physical member line, and that actually goes to the placement point of however you're placing the column. And that's what the structural snap snaps to. So for example, if I were to come on here and say place beam, let me get a uh, size in here for right now. You can see how the structural snap snaps onto that physical member line. And you can go up to the building designer pull down menu, go to the structural fly out. I can see that structural snaps is enabled. Now one thing I like to do is go to the tools pull down menu, tool boxes, and there's actually a little structural snap toolbox. You just scroll through all these possible toolboxes you can open. You'll find these ones that start with STR. So these are the structural ecosystem building designer structural. And here's this little one called structural snaps. Notice it looks like this. And you can turn that off and on with this. This is just a toggle. You see if I click on it, I see that it's off up here now. So I can turn it off and on from up here. But every now and then, the structural snap, you know, I don't want to use it for certain t things that I'm modeling, so I can turn it off as I need. But when you have it on, you need to be on the key point snap mode. You'll see that it it snaps on to that structural snap. Another thing that we talk about in this exercise is the model annotation. I can see that it's showing me this is a diameter 8 column. And if we go up to the building designer pull down menu, you go to structural, go to model annotation, you can see this is where that is set up. So any member that I model is going to get the section name applied to it. So that's what's happening out here in the model. And this has nothing to do with the drawings or the sheets. This is just so e quick reference in the model. Notice I've got things like handrails and bar joists to not apply a label. It gets kind of busy for those smaller structural components that you model in your file. These came with the seed file that we used when we created our files. So that's why one of the reasons I wanted to use the structural seed file, because I set those up in that seed file for structural usage.